Christmas. What you need for this is tinfoil, Christmas lights, tape, some batteries, 9 volts, some double A or triple A, paper, and wire cutters. You want to cut the bulbs off um, and then strip the wires so that you can actually see the wires. And then you want to tape it, um, tape the tin foil to paper, and then tape the wires to the tin foil to create a circuit. And you can create a parallel circuit like we have here. And we're using two AAA batteries, but you could use one AAA, one AA, two AA, whatever you have on hand. Or you can create a series circuit like we have here, and we're using the 9 volt battery with this. And then we wanted to see if we can make the lights brighter. So we took one of the lights out of the circuit and then reconnected the circuit to see if we could make the lights brighter. And we did! What you'll need is candy canes, of course, some cups, vinegar, baby oil, and hot and cold water. And then you just fill up the cups, that one had cold water in it, and then that one I put baby oil and vinegar, and then hot water in that one. And then you just stick the candy canes in and see which ones dissolve faster. You can make predictions and guesses. And then we watch the experiment, which one was dissolving the fastest, um, which one wasn't dissolving them at all. And of course, he took a few bites. What you need is either a hot plate, or we used our coffee maker, or you could even just do it on your stove if you're comfortable with that. We used a tablespoon of benzoic acid, a glue gun, some little figurines, a mason jar with a lid, and, and safety goggles because we are using benzoic acid. And then you glue your little figurines to the top of the lid, or the underside of the lid I should say. And then we heated our benzoic acid in water on our coffee maker for about 15 minutes. Um, you don't want it to boil. And then as it cooled, you can see it created these beautiful snowflakes. Um, we, like I said, we used a tablespoon. I think that that was too much. If you notice that our little astronaut, he has a lot of snow in his little jar. Um, maybe half a tablespoon would work a little better for this. Benzoic acid doesn't dissolve in room temperature water, but when you heat the water, the solubility of the molecule is increased, kind of like dissolving sugar in water. Cooling the solution causes the benzoic acid to go back into solid form. Slow cooling of the, of the solution allows the benzoic acid to form prettier, more snow-like flakes than if you just mix the benzoic acid with water. This is a fun one. What you'll need is dry yeast, three tablespoons of warm water, an empty bottle, you could use a two liter bottle, 12% hydrogen peroxide, you could also use 6% or 3%, um, dish soap, and food coloring. You'll also probably want a empty pan or something to catch the foam in. And because we're using 12% hydrogen peroxide, safety goggles. First, you'll want to mix your yeast and your warm water and stir it up a little bit, and that's going to be your catalyst for this experiment. Then you'll want to add half a cup of the hydrogen peroxide into your bottle, and then you put some dish soap in it. There's no specific amount for the dish soap. And then if you want the stripes on your toothpaste, put your food coloring on the sides of the bottle. And then you add your catalyst. And this creates an exothermic reaction. So you can actually feel how warm it gets. 
and it is safe to touch and it's a lot of fun to play in. So if you haven't tried this one, I think that you'll love it. need for this is tin foil, candy canes of course, and a pan. First we talked about if we could bend them. Is it hard? And we found out we couldn't. Then we bent the tin foil in different kind of patterns and guessed what would happen when we put it in the oven. And then we baked it at 350 for about three minutes. And once it cooled for about a minute, it was safe to touch. And this is when you can kind of bend them and twist them. And we talked about how heat changes the properties of the candy canes. And as they cooled, they went back to being hard and we couldn't bend them anymore. What you need for this is ammonia, bluing, salt, a measuring spoon, a dish, and then another dish to mix in. And you'll want thin cardboard like the back of a notebook. So I already have three tablespoons of water in there. And then I added three tablespoons of bluing, three tablespoons of salt, and one and a half tablespoons of ammonia. And then I mixed it up. Then you want to cut your tree shape out of the cardboard and cut a slit, slit in the bottom of one and the top of the other so you can make a 3D tree. And then I added food coloring to the ends of my tree. I use green, but you could use blue or um, red or any, any kind of colors that you want to use. And then I put my mixture on the plate and added my tree and then just watched it grow crystals. This works because of capillary action, evaporation, crystallization, and saturation. Pretty cool, huh? You might have done this one before, it's pretty easy. What you need is borax, hot water, a string, a pencil, and some pipe cleaner. And then you just make your snowflake or whatever shape you like, add the string, tie the string to the pencil, and make sure that it's the string isn't long enough so that it doesn't touch the sides or the bottom of the cup. And then you want to add three tablespoons to one cup of borax, three tablespoons of borax to one cup of water I should say, and then put it in there and wait overnight. And the next day you'll have a crystal ornament. What you need for this is a jar, vase, cup, something like that, candle, baking soda, and vinegar. And then you just put some baking soda in your jar and add some vinegar. And then you just pick it up and pour the air on the candle. And it goes out like magic. All you need for this is a piece of PVC pipe and some Christmas tinsel. Take three to six strands of tinsel and tie them together on each end, about six inches apart. And then you cut off the excess on the end. And when you rub the pipe in your hair or give it a static charge, 
you're giving it a negative static charge. The orb is at first attracted to the pipe because it has a positive charge, but as soon as the orb touches the pipe, it picks up a negative charge. And since the pipe is negative and the tinsel orb is now negative, they repel away from each other and it makes the orb levitate. What you need for this is some oranges and we're using a bucket of water but you could also easily use a sink. You'll notice that the unpeeled orange floats. That's because the rind is very porous and filled with tiny packets of air. Even though you're removing mass when you peel the orange, the peeled orange is more dense and sinks in the water. If you tried any of these, I would love to hear it. Let me know.